Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is uh, November the 23rd and we're moving into the, um, I guess, the holiday weekend. And I uh, got a comment um, from a supporter uh, asking if I could go through the, you know, show a couple examples, go through a chart showing areas where there's aggressive buying and selling and how do I um, mark off the actual zones, you know, actually uh, going into, to, I guess, more so detail about where to mark the candles off if there's an area of supply or demand you know, um, where there's aggressive buying or selling and a, or tucked back into a lower portion of a swing or the upper portion of a swing, uh, to where we mark off those supply and demand zones. So, uh, we're going to see if we can, uh, talk about that today in, in a video. And I'm going to show you a, a couple more examples of, um, not only trade entries, but areas of supply and, and demand and how do you, uh, mark off the, the zone itself according to the candle, you know, from the lower portion to the upper portion of the candle, where the actual zone actually lies and how to properly map it off on your chart. So again, these are areas of where aggressive buying and selling, you have to understand what supply and demand is. Um, you know, when price moves away from an area, creating, say for instance, a swing, and demand is gonna be tucked back at the lower portion of that swing. Supply is gonna be, is going to be tucked back in the upper portion of a swing to where um, you see a lot of aggressive selling coming out of a supply area, a lot of aggressive buying coming out of a, out of a uh, demand area. So you have to be able to, with your eyes, be able to see that. But the key to it is being able to read and understand um, the structure of the market and following price action as it's leading back to those zones or to those areas. I talk about this and have talked about this so many times over and over in videos. But like I always say, guys, I have no problem reiterating things because um, lots of times it takes several approaches for people to kind of get an understanding of um, specific topics, whatever someone is trying to relay a message, whatever the case is. Uh, some, some people learn first or second time around. Some people take a little bit long, you know, could, could, could take a little longer. Uh, so we all learn at different speeds or all, at different different uh, processes or, you know, de depending on the information and how it's actually presented. But I have covered this information several, several times before, and I'll cover it again today in this video here. And, um, you know, I'm not saying that to, to say that this won't be the last time, but I think people really need to spend the time to watch the videos and go back and watch the videos they they're they it, look i have i guess probably 400 videos on this channel now and you have to ask yourself i'm sure he's covered this topic many times before and i have so please 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 take the time to go back and watch the videos yes it's a lot of videos to watch but guess what that's the only way you're going to learn i had to do the same thing i spent hundreds of hours studying material and if you cannot do that and you don't have the time to do it then maybe you know this is just not the right, um, um, you know, business for you to be in because, guys, it's just like anything else in life. We have to train ourselves to be able to prepare ourselves to be able to understand how to, you know, and to educate ourselves on how to do anything in life. So, um, I'm providing this content for free. And if you don't want to take the time to go back and watch it, then I don't know what else to say um, because I know me. Um, I struggle, as I said, this all the time when I first started trading, and I, it was frustrating. But I had to put the work in. And I'm not going to give anyone uh, a shortcut to life because there are no shortcuts to life and you have to take the same approach as many other traders do unless you're going to pay for somebody else's trading course or find a mentor that is going to, um, you know, uh, take some money from you. And that could be a lot of money, you know, depending on the person. I talked about this, I think, yesterday or in the day before um, video about if you have someone in your pocket that may be your friend that's able to show you information for free i don't have the time i'm not a mentor guys and i say this from the beginning i'm not an educator i'm not a teacher i'm just providing information um that i personally have kind of um you know gathered and put together uh put the, the, the puzzle together for myself to be able to help me in my own um trading experience and journey and that's why i'm sharing these experiences with you guys and you know, hopefully to inspire other individuals, but I'm not an educator or a teacher in a sense to be able to uh, handhold somebody, you know, hold somebody's hand step by step. I'm just giving the information out there, putting it, making it public as if you could go to a library, pull something off the shelf, open that book and read it. It's the same approach. I'm just providing this information for free. So, um, you know, you take it how you take it and do what you want to do with it. And, and if you choose to go back and watch the videos, take the time. You know, hey, if I was in anyone anyone's um, position right now, I would be starting from the first video, working myself going forward, or at least, like I say, understand the two main concepts: market structure and price action. If you can grasp those understandings, 
Go to the channel, type in market structure, type in supply and demand, type in you know price action, and you and not to get to get it all from my channel, uh, whatever the case is. Go on and do your research outside somewhere, you know, and 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 um, collectively, you know, educate yourself properly. There's plenty of books out there. There are plenty of videos out there that you, that you can watch. And yes, I'm not, I'm not. You know, we all know that not everybody is going to be uh, as upfront and um, free as most individuals. I, I'm not charging anything for the information here. Uh, the only thing is, like, if you choose to choose to join one of the tiers for the YouTube membership program, but that's something different, guys. You're getting perks and rewards behind that, and it's just basically supporting the content as me as a content creator, supporting the information that I'm putting out. But you have to do your own homework. I'll say that, and you have to take the time. Time, yes. Some people may say, I don't have the time. Well, if you don't have the time, guys, you're not going to succeed in this business because I'm tell i going to tell you this. You will have to continuously learn and educate yourself on a daily. I spend hours outside of making these videos, trading, engaging in Discord, um, amongst all the other business things that I do, um, You know, even on the weekends, going back and back testing and, and, and it, you know, just always, uh, you know, trying to, uh, educate myself even more. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm constantly reading or looking at information online. Um, so the educational piece, education piece for me, is never going to stop. You have to, you have to understand that. So let's take a quick look at a few examples here, and I'll show you how to uh, not only um, you know identify the zones, but how to draw the zones just as well. And uh, we'll take a look at here a couple of examples of some uh, demand entries first, and then I'll show you maybe show you an example with a, a supply uh, zone. So. Uh, this is from November the 17th. Uh, what we have here, you see this demand zone right here. So let's take this box away, okay? Let's just take it away for, for a moment, okay? Um, what we have leading up to this area being demand, remember I always tell you, the three things that I always look for is a break of structure, a gap, uh, and basically a candle break when I'm trading off the 12 range chart. And that's basically that candle break. You may be asked why you look for a candle break. The candle break shows me and gives me cl a clarification or confirmation for uh, as a clear means of rejection in the market. Okay. Which means it shows me that the candle that the market wants to it's rejecting off an area or a zone. So it wants to continue pushing up in the case of where we trade in supply and demand. I mean, excuse me, trade and demand. Um, so here we have the market making lower lows and lower highs you can clearly see that with your own eyes and you have to be able to visually see that with your eyes guys price moves on down to the end here makes a low here turns around the first thing it does you know as far as the first uh, step of process it breaks structure here moves up okay doesn't clearly come back to this area quite yet okay but we want it to come back to this area okay so when it broke structure here it left a clear gap with what aggressive buying Anytime you see aggressive buying, always, um, you know, notate that 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 is demand. Okay, uh, aggressive buying, break a structure, pushes higher. So then, once it breaks structure and creates an area of demand, okay, and and left behind, you know, all these green candles right here. What do we have? We have a gap there uh, in the market, and the market has not come back to test this area. Yeah, okay, this area right here. All right. So the way I draw it when I'm marking off my uh, demand zones is always the last red candle okay either tucked back within a swing or in this case here at the low of, of a price move to the downside made a low right here this is the last red candle to the downside okay before price turned around and started breaking and breaking breaking structure to the upside okay creating this area of demand below so i'm going to mark it all right from the top where's it at the top portion of that red candle including the wick all right Basically to the bottom end of that red candle, the body of that candle. But because we have this green candle next to it, the kind of wick below it, I'm going to include also the bottom end of that green candle in that zone. Okay. So from the top end, all right, of the red candle, including the wick, to the bottom end of the red candle. But because we have this green candle here, I'm going to also include the wick of that green candle. All right. So all we have to do now is wait for price to come back to that zone. Once price gets back to that zone, what do we do? All we have to do now is the last final step of that process is look for a break of a candle. All right. So I get a break of a candle here. Uh, and what I'm looking for is, is price to break the body of a red candle. Okay. Uh, meaning that once price comes back, a green candle breaking the body of the red candle. All right. So the moment price breaks above, say, 316 and a quarter, um, it didn't close above that. So because it didn't actually close above that red candle right there, 
What I'm looking for now is price to slowly start to, start to break above and take out the wick as well. So once I see price, a candle start taking out the wick, I'm going, me aggressively, I'm going along. You can wait for the break of a candle if you choose to. Um, but I'm going along once I, once I, because I'm aggressive, if you want to take more of the conservative approach, then wait for a full green candle to take out the last red candle to the downside when it pulls back to the demand zone that you marked, okay, or drew off. All right, so once I do that, I'm entering at the, uh, pretty much as price is attempting to break the wick of this candle here. I'm going in aggressive. Um, I'm looking, my aim is to now take price back where? Okay, to this area of liquidity above sitting right here, this 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 high right here, okay? When price pull back to the zone, okay? All right, all right. So that's 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 my aim, that's my goal. Um, because when price came back down here to the downside, again, we had aggressive buying, mark the zone, structure break, finally pulls back into and closes the gap as it comes back to this demand zone. I get a break of a candle. For me, I'm going in a little bit earlier when price starts to break. Um, above and through the wick of the full candle here. I'm going aggressively long and look what it does It pushes up comes back to that area to the top there where there's liquidity resting at understand that okay Understand that all right, so we'll look at the next setup um, There was a area of demand right here um, Okay, uh, disregard this purple purple zone right here guys. I was I was using that for something else um, Anyways, but look at this area of demand sitting right here all right, so this demand zone right here, this demand zone was created. I'm going to show you. All right, so as price taps into that demand zone there, it pushes up, all right, makes a swing to the upside. But then the market does what? All right, it starts to turn back around. Pay attention. So it started breaking, you know, structure to the upside, but then it starts to take structure back down, back out as it's moving back down to the downside, okay? So we have a high here, pull back, lower high, um, excuse me, um, higher low. Uh, higher high, uh, higher low, and then it breaks higher, okay? So as it made structure to the upshot here or uh, and, and taking out structure over here, um, it pulled back here, pushed higher, pulled back, broke higher, turned back around to start taking out, took out structure right here, and then it started, you know, moving lower, making this uh, higher low here, okay? But eventually it comes back around, back to the upside, takes out structure right here so with this move to the upside here it starts swinging to the upside pushes up pulls back breaks higher pulls back breaks higher taking out structure right here and then what do you see here aggressive buying aggressive buying lots of green candles if it's aggressive buying there must be an area of demand left behind or an area of demand that's created or created so um i'm gonna go ahead and mark off my area of demand in this case all right right here okay all right uh, this is a supporting swing that came out of this swing to the upside here that took out structure right here, this, this high right here, okay? So, when price pushes up here, aggressive buying, does it immediately come back to it? No, but we, it left behind a gap there. So, we got to break a structure, we got a gap, creating an area of demand, wait for price to come back to that area now. And when it gets back, so we'll go ahead, okay? We'll take it, let's take that box away. Because the next question people are going to be asking is, well, show me how do you, how do you, how do you know, or how do you mark the zone? You know, how do you draw it? Okay. Well, again, this was a swing to the upside right here. Okay. Swing up, pull back. The last red candle on the swing, on that swing, when price created a swing to the upside right here, the last red candle tucked back within the swing. Okay. That with the price on the pullback. Okay. So. We mark it from the top end, including the wick of the candle, to the bottom end, including the body of the candle. All right. In this case here, we also got a little bit here with a green candle here, kind of pushed below the body of the red candle. So I'm, I'm going to include that just as well. Top end, including the wick of the red candle, to the bottom end, right there, that green candle. That's how I draw my zone. Now, it's just a matter of waiting for price to tap into the zone. Okay. Once it pulls back, taps into this, the demand zone, boom. That is the man, aggressive buying. What do you think is going to happen? Price has not tested it yet, so which means it's untested. It's, 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 so to me, it means it's a, it's a high probability chance that price is going to uh, probably reject that area because you have to understand what's going on there. When price quickly moves with a, le a lot of aggressive force, meaning they're buying or selling, a lot of orders probably didn't get filled. So nine times out of ten, when price gets back there, uh, they're going to want to try to fill more orders. So price moves back to that area. Once I get a break of a candle to the upside, basically breaking 
uh, a candle to the upside, I'm going long, okay? My uh, goal or my aim, of course, we have liquidity sitting way up here. This was a high, okay? On the pullback, you know, that this was the high here before price pulled back. So this right here is now an area of resistance sitting above us, okay? So my aim is gonna be there, but yes, price can stop here, it can stop here, it can stop here just as well. Understand that, okay? Um, but what I'm looking for is a candle break to the upside. And once I get that, uh, that candle break to the upside, you know, right here, meaning here's that red candle I talked about. You're looking for that green candle to break above the body of the red candle, okay? In this case, it does. It closes right here. I'm going along. Um, my, my first aim is going to be, you have to pay attention because we do have resistance sitting right here in this area. Price can come to that area just like it did right here. Pull right up to it. What did it do? It bounced, okay, before pushing higher. So, um, now, there is liquidity resting right here at the top end or back end of every, every, of every swing to the downside. So at the at every um, I guess swing high as price pulled to the downside here, there's liquidity rest right here, here in the top end right here at resistance. Okay, so each one of these areas is, is acts as an area of resistance where price could actually bounce, but you do have liquidity sitting at the tops here, and you know a lot of times they're going to aim to try to try to collect on that area of liquidity resting at the top end of these areas of, uh, of these swings here. So you see what price does continue pushing higher until it gets up here and takes out this this, this swing here. Because it's an aggressive buying that took place here, out of this area here, supporting swing, taking out structure, gap, okay? Aggressive buying, price continue pushing higher, uh, comes back to it, and you know, you could just look to try to capitalize on any area of liquidity above, all right? So, again, I showed you how to, to uh, draw two areas of demand, or how to mark off those zones, okay? So let's take a look at an area of supply now, and we'll wrap this video up. All right, so take a look at this. We see what price is. Okay, we're gonna take a talk about talk about this area here. Okay, um, price is making a run to the upside here. This was uh, I think November the twentieth, going into the twenty-first. Uh, so it's making higher highs and higher lows. All right. Okay. So what happens then is price turns around, starts breaking structure back, coming down to the downside, and it's taking out this area here, this area here, before bouncing into an area of demand. Uh, right here at the back end um, as it's moving to the downside. A lot of aggressive selling taking place here, okay? You see that? Okay, so it must have been some area off here to the left here where price uh, hit an area of, uh, could be resistance, could be could be supply, whatever the case is, some area there that stopped it. The market turns around, a lot of followed by a lot of aggressive selling. This is towards the end or close of uh, the 20th, okay? Uh, at the end of the, the uh, trading session. All right, so it takes out structure. Again, taking out structure, Leaving behind, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of aggressive uh, uh, selling that took right here, uh, which it creates an area of supply. So we'll go ahead and mark our area of supply now, okay? Why? Because we have structure break to downside, breaking structures to the downside, leaving a lot of, uh, followed by a lot of aggressive selling, leaving behind pretty much a gap in the market back to this area right here, okay? Because it's the area where the origination of the selling took place. Price moves lower. We'll mark that area now. Let's go ahead and grab our rectangle. So, in this case here, because we're talking about supply, it's going to be the last green candle either in a swing, where price was making a swing to the downside, say for instance, but in this case here, uh, the last green candle to the upside, all right? And because we have a red candle right here, this body or this candle right here, that kind of uh, broke above this green candle right here, I'm including that as well, because I want to include the green candle, and the top end, including the wick of that red candle. So it's going to be the top end of that green candle to the bottom of the green candle, which include the wick and that green. Uh, let me go ahead and draw it, and I'll talk about it right here. Okay. So um, let's let's kind of make it a little bit cleaner. Okay. So it's always the top end of the green candle, bottom end of the green candle, including the wick. But because this red candle kind of moved, uh, it, it, it moved above that or, you know, pushed above the red candle, including the top end of that wick as well. So this is my zone, how I draw it, okay? Um, so it, I draw it out to the right, waiting for price to come back to that area there. Once it taps into the demand zone, excuse me, the supply zone, a lot of aggressive selling took place here. A lot of orders probably didn't get filled there because the market moved pretty quick to the downside. So once price gets back to that area, at that point, I'm just looking for, a break of a candle to the downside. Now we have to be careful uh, in this situation because we do have areas of support right below us. 
Um, so my aim will be once I get that breaker candle is to take it to liquidity, which is at the bottom end of uh, the swings to the upside here, back at the bottom end of the swings to the upside. So tuck, like price pushed up here, liquidity resting right here, uh, pushed higher right um, as it, let's see here, pushed up, pull back. Okay, uh, pushed up. So I made a high here, broke back, made a high here, broke back, made a high here. Okay, so liquidity resting here, here, and at the bottom end where there is um, uh, support at just as well, right here. So you have support here, here, and here. Okay, so these are supporting, these are not supporting swings, but these are areas uh, where price can bounce at uh, because it's the support. But the aim really is going to be back when price broke this area to the downside, broke through these areas of structure, made this low here. Then it started following up, making these swings to the upside right here. Basically retracing back to this zone right here. It left behind the area of support here. And, I mean, not area, what? Support, yes, but also liquidity. So my aim or my goal is going to be to try to take price back down to this area. That, that should be your aim or your goal um, because there's liquidity sitting right there, all right? So this is an, it is also an area where people bought it. Why? Because there was demand right here. Well, there was demand that people bought it, leaving behind an area of liquidity, okay? So when price gets back to this area of supply, you want to try to take it back down to that area of demand because there is liquidity resting right there because people bought and got into the market. So buyers bought right here, sellers sold right here. So moving back to this area of supply, you want to take it back down to an area where there's liquidity, again, where people had started buying it. And they will test that area because this is an area where buyers bought it and they want to stop those traders out, okay? So... That's how you draw an area of supply. That's how you draw an area of demand. I showed you a few examples, guys, and I don't really know how to really break it down any clearer than that. Um, it's just going to be a matter of you having to take on the, your own experience, your own practice, put in the work, and just review, review, review um, You know the material at hand. And I'm not saying you have to learn it all from me. Go out there and maybe try to find someone else if you, if you choose to do so, whatever the case is. Um, but just learn supply and demand as a whole. You know, for me, it works. You don't have to trade it if you choose not to, but it is the style of trade and how I trade, and I incorporate a strategy around it. And if you really want to kind of uh, dig deep into the actual strategy of how I actually trade it, go back and watch the videos where I talk about the pair of charts using one chart coupled with another chart, basically starting off marking your zones off of a higher time frame chart, scaling down to a lower time frame chart. It's the same type of step by step process. You know, looking for a structure break, looking for price to pull back to an area of demand on the higher time or supply on the higher time frame, scaling down to a lower time frame chart, looking for the same thing, a structure break, creating a new area of demand or supply on the lower time frame, wait for price to pull back to it, wait for the rejection, take your entry. It's as easy and simple as that. Well, I hope you guys found some value in this content, guys. I mean, I really try to, you know, one, like I said, show you a map off and how to draw either supply or demand. Uh, again, always think about supply, aggressive selling, demand, aggressive buying. And this is all what I was trying to show you guys as a whole in this video here. So uh, that's all I have for you guys to today. Yes, we are moving into the holidays tomorrow for all those that, that celebrate uh, Thanksgiving holiday, which is tomorrow. Uh, the markets will be closed. I will have an early close tomorrow and they close uh, or close completely on Friday. So be safe. Travel safe if you're traveling. Everyone have a, a, a wonderful, beautiful uh, Thanksgiving. If you're spending time with your loved ones, whatever the case is, for all those that celebrate it. Um, and I will see you guys at the beginning of next week when we start doing some more, uh, you know, when the, the markets open back up and uh, we can get the rock and roll and the trading, get, trading again. But I hope you guys found some value in this content. If you're interested in joining our Discord community, all you have to do is find the link to the Discord down in the description portion of the video. Um, I'll show it to you. I'll pull it up right quick. Uh, before I jump here, um, here we go. This is the Discord community. We have a few channels set up. Uh, we have the trading floor. We have the general chat channel. The general chat channel is for uh, basically just uh, traders conversing, future traders, those that trade the future markets, conversing with one another, you know, sharing information, whatever the case is. Um, if you are a trader and you trade and you're interested in coming over and uh, joining us on the trading floor, which is our pretty much the the, the, the channel. On the Discord server, to where we basically share our levels of zones, uh, trade entries, things of that nature. Um, you can join us again. Just simply find the link down in the description portion of the video. Appreciate everyone who's tuned in, who's watching the videos. If you don't mind, drop a like on the channel. Excuse me, on the video. Please drop a like on the video. First time viewer, 
Hopefully we gained you as a, a sub here on the channel. All you have to do is find the red button down below, click on subscribe, uh, click on the bell next to it, turn your post notifications on so you never miss one of the uploads. And that's all to it. I'll see you guys wrap it up. Um, I may drop a, a you know a video or two uh, over the, the break or whatever the case is. But um, if you don't hear anything from me, that's because I'm enjoying my time off. But uh, more than likely, I probably would have dropped one or two videos. But anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. And uh, that's it. Goodbye.